Does the Yamaha Pure Direct feature actually do something? Or is it there to just give audiophiles confidence that they're getting the best performance out of their AVR? That's the question we're gonna be answering in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. I'm gonna answer the age old question. Does this little pure direct button that you see on the remote control, and there's a little pure direct button on the front panel of your Yamaha receiver, does it really do anything? Or is it just a light show? Is it just to give people false confidence that their receiver is gonna perform even better? Well, I wanted to know this question. I wanted to know the answer to this question. So I spent some time with my audio precision testing the Yamaha RXA 6A AV receiver, running through every combination of tests you can that I could think of, comparing straight mode versus pure direct. Now, I want to make sure everybody realizes that um, what version of firmware I'm using, because obviously things can change depending on the firmware version that you're running on your AVR. And I'm in the middle of doing some testing with Yamaha to try to get some performance things ironed out that I found. But I'm going to today focus just on two channel performance with pure direct versus straight. I'm gonna share my screen with you. I'm gonna show you all my configuration so you understand. And in the web, uh, the web setup section, if you go to information, you'll see that I just downloaded the latest firmware 1.14 slash 3.08. They just had a firmware update about two days ago and it was a pretty extensive one. It took about 40 minutes to update the receiver. I asked about what the update was and it was something to do with XM radio, how it handles XM radio. Not something that I'm concerned about, obviously, because I don't care for the quality of XM. I think it's pretty trashy. But with that said, if you are an XM user, you want to definitely get the latest version of the firmware. And regardless, you want to always operate the latest version of the firmware of your AVR, especially with how things change with HDMI. So I want to give you a scenario of all these different measurements that I ran. The first one being, I wanted to check the analog inputs because this thing have, has balanced XLR inputs. It's got regular analog uh, inputs as well. For those people that are running phono, it has a phono stage. So this was just basically the analog unbalanced inputs. Now I did check the balanced ones as well, and I'll go more into those details when I do the formal review of this product. But here we see some pretty incredible measurements here. This is the analog input in pure direct mode. So I'm taking the analog input and I'm measuring the uh, preamp outputs, analog uh, unbalanced outputs. And you can see the bandwidth goes to the limit of my scope. My, my uh, audio precision only goes to about 80 kilohertz bandwidth. So this thing is rule of flat out to 80 kilohertz. The, uh, you know, it's even flat down to 10 hertz and it starts rolling off just about a dB at uh, below five hertz. The distortion is unbelievably good at 0.001% THD plus N. Now I know uh, the guys that that read uh, Audio Science Review, they they get a hard on over Synad results. So there's nothing magical about Synad. All you have to do is take your THD number, divide it by 100, multiply it by 20 log, and there you go. So in this case, we got 100 dB Synad on the analog inputs. That's a really good measurement. That's a very quiet um, analog input. If you're using uh, any analog source in pure direct mode, this is one killer uh, preamp. Definitely very transparent, very flat frequency response. So the next thing I wanna show you, now I'm comparing the straight mode versus pure direct. And as you can see in the upper grid here, um, the straight mode has that ruler flat frequency response. Whereas when you go in straight mode, it's engaging the DSP. Even though I have the main speaker set large, there's, there's some definite roll off below 10 Hertz and there's roll off below above uh, about 40 kilohertz because the sampling rate is 96 K. So it's about 48 kilohertz is the brick wall filter response. So you can see that the when the DSP is engaged, actually the level drops a little bit. I was actually surprised to see that. But yeah, the fle frequency response is still very linear within the human hearing. You know, we hear between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz when we're young, and that goes down as you get older, unfortunately. But I also plotted the distortion down below, and you could see that in pure direct, the distortion was lower, especially above 500 hertz, pretty significantly lower. 
Um, if you look at the grid, I got the distortion in pure direct is that 0 0.001 I was telling you about. And then in straight mode, it, it jumped up to 0 0.005. Again, this is really good, really low distortion, uh, nothing really to be worried about, but there is a difference. The pure direct, when you're running the analog inputs makes a measurable difference. Now the question is, is it audible? I'll let you guys decide that. But you know, these kind of distortion numbers generally are inaudible to the human ear. Even the best listener, even the golden ear can't hear 0.005% THD plus N. So the next measurement I want to show you is I did a voltage sweep uh, just to see what the preamp outputs can handle. And I've actually talked about this before when I did the eco mode setting uh, um, video. So we get a clean four volts RMS out of the preamp outputs, out of the unbalanced outputs. You actually get eight volts RMS out of the XLR outputs, which is fantastic. But you can see there is a big difference in how the distortion um, versus the measured level goes with straight versus pure direct. Pure direct is super, super low. Like I said, it was 0 0.001. And then when you go into uh, straight mode, obviously it jumps up to 0 0.03 at the very low voltage drive. And it gets lower as the level goes up because the noise floor is a bigger ratio between the signal versus the noise floor. So that drops and you get a better uh, THD as a result. Um, the sign ad, <clears throat> I ran the sign ad. I sh you could see it on the right column. You could see the difference of sign ad is 15 dB. I mean, it's significant in the measurement. The question is, is it audible? You know, I do notice when I run the analog inputs on Yamaha receivers historically, um, if I run it in straight mode and not pure direct mode, I do hear the noise floor go up. I hear hissing. And the reason for that is Yamaha uses really state-of-the-art DACs, but their A to D converters are not state-of-the-art. It's a low priority for their receivers because they realize that these receivers and 95% of the users are doing HDMI. But they do offer that pure direct path, which has incredibly good um, results. So if you really care about fidelity and you're running analog inputs, use the pure direct mode. And I could show you here with the SNR, Basically, I put a drive of uh, about 400 millivolts in and I measured two volts out. So in straight mode, I only got 82 dB SNR. That's A weighted. Um, that's a good result. It's not stellar. But look what happens when I go from straight mode to pure direct. Bam, we got, you know, a good 15 or 20 dB better noise floor. So that's pretty significant. And that's what I've heard. I've heard when you, if you have a Yamaha receiver and you go between straight and pure direct with an analog source, you'll, and you go by, you know, you stick your ear by the tweeter, you'll hear the noise floor go up when you're not in pure direct mode. That's basically what this measurement is showing. So it can be audible depending on how far away you are from the speakers, the speaker sensitivity and how quiet your room is and how good your hearing is as well. So I wanted to also show you the cool thing about the uh, Yamaha receivers. You can engage the base management if you're in straight mode. Um, when Pure Direct completely bypasses the DAC, so when you bypass the DAC, you have no base management. So if you are running an analog input and you do want to use base management, you're going to be forced to use the straight mode. And here I show you, um, I set the, the high pass filter at 80 hertz, and that's exactly what I'm measuring with a 12 dB per octave roll off below 80 hertz. And then again, it rolls off at 48K based on the sampling rate of 96K. Um, the signal drops a little bit when you use the DSP and the distortion goes up, not horribly, but it does It does go up, especially um, at the very, very, the reason why you see the, the high distortion at the low frequencies, you could ignore that below the, the crossover. It's because those frequencies are being filtered out and you're just basically showing noise there at that point. So you really need to look at the distortion above 80 hertz and you can see the gradual rise went from 0.001 to, you know, 0.003 or 0.004. So there is a measurable dif difference in distortion, but unlikely audible. The only thing that's really audible in an analog input for straight versus pure direct is the noise floor that goes up, which I showed you with the SNR measurements. So now let's get into using an HDMI input. So now we are on the digital side and we're measuring the analog outputs. And I compared straight versus pure direct. As you can see, the frequency response is identical, very similar, almost no difference at all. 
there is a bit of ringing in the post filter um, output, which I'm curious about. I'm going to ask Yamaha what that's all about. I've never really seen a Yamaha receive a ring like that. But again, that's a you know above 50k, so I don't think it's something that you have to worry about. There's no signal going up there, and it's not going to damage a tweeter because it's so high up. I think it's fine. Would like to see that not be there, but it is there, unfortunately. Um, you could see the distortion differences between straight versus pure direct, much lower distortion differences than it was with the analog. So when you're using a digital input on this receiver, um, the divide between straight versus pure direct narrows. But there is still a measurable difference, as you can see in the distortion graphs here. Excellent results overall. I'm very happy with that. And let's see what we got here. So now I did the same thing. I ran a voltage sweep to see the max voltage output. As we said before, it's four volts RMS. And you could see straight versus pure direct with an HDMI in. And the cyanide differences are only five dB difference between the pure direct and straight. Before with the analog input, there was about a 15 dB difference. So again, the divide between straight versus pure direct narrows when you're using digital inputs. Same thing when you use toss link as well. I didn't show the results here because I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. But suffice it to say, um, a 5 dB uh, cyanide difference is pretty minuscule. Definitely not something you're going to hear. Now I want to show you the SNR. With a 0 dB FS signal in, that's a maximum digital uh, full-scale signal coming in and 2 volts out. In straight mode, we measured 105 dB. That's good. Not the quietest I've seen in an AVR. I've seen usually the best AVRs, I get about 110 dB. 105 is 5 dB off, but it's still inaudibly low distortion or notably low noise, if you want to call it that. That's in straight mode, 105. Then when we go to pure direct, now we get 111 dB. And this is, this is pretty much state of the art. This is what I like to see. So if you really are a noise freak and you're worried and you're running really high sensitivity speakers and you have a speaker close to the seated area, you might want to just engage pure direct mode if you're not, especially if you're not engaging the DSP, if you're not doing the post-processing like the different DSP modes, that's going to add noise in itself. So if you really want the pure signal and the digital input as well, pure direct does do something. As you can see here, we got about a six or seven dB noise advantage by switching to pure direct. So the other thing I wanted to show you, since I have you on this video, um, Yamaha offers different HDMI levels, and this is something to do with jitter control. Now, my audio precision it does not have the jitter module, so I can't measure jitter. So what I try to do is measure the frequency response and distortion differences using all the different HDMI modes. And I found that HDMI mode 3 is actually the best. There's a little bit less ringing. The bandwidth goes up a little bit higher, so um, as you can see here. And the distortion is just a little bit lower. I mean, especially at around 25 kilohertz, but who cares because you can't hear that. I honestly don't see how this would translate to any audible difference in sound. But if you want to play with the different HDMI modes, you're more than welcome to do it. The best measuring one that I found was HDMI mode 3, but all those different versions are in my opinion, equally good. Then the last thing is there's a DAC setting and this controls the type of roll off on the DAC. So you have slow roll off, you got sharp roll off, short latency. I think the default on it is the um, sharp roll off, I believe. I can't remember now because I've been playing with this so much, but I try to do measurements again on this and I didn't really see any difference. The output is the same. If there was really a difference in how the DAC was being rolled off, this test should show it. So I don't know if this feature is just not working or not enabled properly. This is something I'm going to be showing to Yamaha um, when they see this video. But I don't see much of a difference at all uh, with the different DAC settings. And I know in the past, I thought I heard differences when I played around with them on the 5200, but I didn't do a blind test, so I could be subject to placebo effect it might not be reality. So all those settings are in the uh, sound menu. Now you could do it on the OSD on your AVR, or you could do it. You could do it here in the web editor. Ironically, I can't find the jitter setting. Um, I don't know where that setting is on the web editor. I know when you hit the uh, menu on your remote control on your OSD, you go into the sound setting, and then there's that jitter control. 
if you want if you guys want to play with that that's on you i just don't think it makes a huge difference so that's it i mean um just to sum things up, the analog preamp section on this receiver is top notch. It's really good. You got plenty of drive voltage, four volts RMS out of the unbalanced outputs, eight volts RMS out of the XLR front channel outputs. The distortion's really low. Frequency response is awesome. Everything is linear. This is a very good, it's going to be a very good sounding analog preamp from what I could see with my measurements. And next up, I'm just going to uh, actually do some real testing on this receiver, plug it into speakers, do some YPOW measurements. That's kind of my next goal. I'm going to be doing a bunch of these different videos, and then I'll do a final review of the entire product. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please thumb it up. Please subscribe to the channel. Give me some comments down below what your experiences are when you do those different DAC settings. Are you running your receiver pure direct or not? Now you know the truth about what Pure Direct does. It actually does do something. In the past, I've measured receivers where it really didn't make much of a difference at all. I think some of the older uh, Denon and Marantz, I got you know similar measurements with Pure Direct engaged or not engaged, but they always make a difference with analog inputs because in Pure Direct, you're bypassing the, uh, the DAC and you're bypassing the DSP. So if you're an analog purist, you're going to want to do Pure Direct definitely. If you're just running HDMI, it's a slightly better measurable results, probably not audible. You're fine if you're running straight mode. You're fine if you're running in pure direct. Personally, I don't mess with the pure direct when I'm using digital uh, sources. I just like to see the display, and I don't really notice any audible difference when I play with that. So, guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support so I can continue doing these videos. You can come into our uh, Patreon channel. You can ask questions. You can suggest video topics. I'm there to talk to you guys. Appreciate it again. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.